please listen ladies and gentlemen over dwelling in the past both negative and positive past has an effect on anyone there is something about the way god designed the human spirit such that the moment you begin to overdwell in the past whether positive past or negative past it sustains an ability to peg you and stop you from going forward is someone learning now so paul is speaking here and says brethren i count myself regardless whatever results you see i count myself to not have apprehended but there is this one thing i do number one i forget the things which are behind provided they are behind i forget them to forget does not mean to lose memory of to forget means to not overdwell there to not give it power over your current condition is someone learning now now listen very carefully overdwelling i wrote here in the past both negative and positive can hinder advancement and progress in life there are many people today who failed they are failing now simply because they succeeded yesterday the success of yesterday has refused to allow them make progress today and there are those who are failing now because they failed yesterday and they have camped around the failure of yesterday and they are wasting today discussing yesterday are we learning now now write this down please overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement every time you begin to overdwell on yesterday especially a negative yesterday the effect that it has on you is that it can bring fear fear of today fear of tomorrow and discouragement it deflates your passion to be daring it deflates your passion to press hallelujah the bible tells us of a man called gideon gideon was a man who had been destined to be a warrior a valiant man but the bible tells us he was hiding and when the angel came to him he said oh thou mighty man of valor and the man was hiding he said don't insult me don't call me that name if it is true look what has happened to us i am the least person he says the least person and my father's tribe is also the least god did not ask him that information it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks there are many people today who cannot make progress you are destined to be doing great things in the lives and the destinies of people in ministry in business but yesterday has such listen yesterday is so jealous it will never allow you to leave it and get into tomorrow not without a fight yesterday always wants to relieve itself in your today you must sustain the power to break away from yesterday are we together just because you were Saul yesterday does not mean you must remain Saul forever. Saul can become Paul. Cephas can become Simon. Abraham can become Abraham. Are we together now? This is very important. Paul is saying the reason behind my consistent advancement is that there is one thing that I will not fail to do. I forget the things that are before me. Isn't it amazing that Paul, while he's in prison, you would think he should be regretting the prison he's busy writing a letter and warning the churches and saying i'm coming i hear that some of you are now misbehaving just to let you receive this letter first and wait for me as soon as i come out if you come out of a prison will you run away or continue what you are doing this was a man that the past did not have power over him you are in prison and you're already informing the people tell this guy i heard that he's teaching something else when i come out i will meet with you shortly this is a prisoner telling people and as soon as he comes out you will think he will write a letter say do you know what i went through mm -mm. are we together my first assignment while encouraging you tonight is to destroy these excuses that have always made every new year look like the old one say no way shout it again say no way. no way 
no excuses for failure in ministry no excuses for failure in your life you are not the first person to be wounded i regret with um, i sympathize with what happened yesterday but we are tired of hearing yesterday's story there are people today who will remain failures forever and they will start telling you stories that happened 10 years ago do you know i bought a house and rain destroyed it okay sorry but yesterday is too far 10 years ago this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind so dwelling in a negative past and you see satan understands the power of the mind he will manipulate your thinking into believing you cannot become because of what you were yesterday so when god is saying i want to make a mighty prophet out of you satan will use your mind to mock you and say you is it that god lacked men what is god going to do with a vessel like you is someone learning already there are many people seated some of you watching me now if you had been able to sustain the power to conquer yesterday you would have been blessing the nations now in business in life you've been in lagos but you've been in your yesterday always complaining why is your january like this you know i told you that this my destiny helper just died last year okay i understand and i'm not being sarcastic it's all right he's been buried jesus is still alive Are we together oh i was raped when i was a child i sympathize with you i don't throw away your pain but you have to get past that realm are we together someone told me yes and he said no again all right that's all i mean get out of those things shake yesterday and say goodbye goodbye once and for all once and for all in the name of jesus goodbye to the tears goodbye to the shame goodbye to the mockery Perhaps before you got born again, you lived a wayward life. Now you are saved. There is a big difference between being an unbeliever and a believer. It's a spiritual reality. Whether your mind has agreed with it or not, the Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. It's the assignment of the world to bring your mind into the experience that has been furnished in your spirit. This one thing I do. Is someone learning now? Dwelling on a negative past can destroy you. And I'm here by the Spirit of God to tell someone, God still is looking, God is still looking for you. He still wants you. That preacher is still in you. That businessman is still in you. That prophet is still in you. Forget about the naysayers. They didn't create you. They will not be there when you make it. Are we together now? Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old i failed yesterday i applied for a job and no one gave me a job can i tell you today is the gift that god gives men to correct yesterday's tragedy every time you wake up and you see that it's a new day that new day is a message from god there is still hope for a tree is someone learning now now over dwelling on a positive past i need to balance it over dwelling on yesterday's success, yesterday's results, ministerially, in business, in career, and so on and so forth, it brings pride, it brings overconfidence, and it brings indiscipline. Listen carefully. You can so succeed that you stop obeying the principles that brought you there because you believe that you are too great to fail. This is the mistake of great people so you have a lot of balloon success people are up today and down tomorrow over dwelling on a positive past creates pride over confidence and indiscipline pride over confidence and indiscipline is someone learning now so paul says this one thing i do whether they are scars or crowns provided they are in my yesterday i make sure they do not have an effect on me because there is something before me you can never focus on the future until you do something with what is past thank god for 2023 thank god for the house you built 
thank God for the business stride. Thank God for the ministerial exploits. Thank God you had a child. Thank God you got married. Thank God you relocated. But 2023 is gone. Rejoice over what God did, but do not overdwell there. That house can be in your mind and stop the estate from coming. Are we together? Yes. Many of us, listen, this is a revelation that God gave me many years ago. And I submit to you, it's a principle that still governs my life. No matter how great God does whatever he does through my life, once I am done with that meeting and that program, I kneel down and say, Father, to you be the glory. That's the end of it. How was the conference? Great. Glory be to God. What is the next agenda in front? Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Yes. There are some of you, the moment you step in in the midst of people, you are always telling them stories of yesteryears. As you look at me like this, don't, don't worry, oh, there are many things. There's a story I will tell you. In 1997, do you know this one happened? I saved 500 people in one meeting. 1997, what is today's date? You must refuse to allow your crowns be so heavy on your head that they stop you from flying. No, don't, don't refuse to allow it. That you gather a lot of accolades that you cannot move forward. No. Let me tell you the truth. It is a dangerous thing to once be great and then you are still alive. That in your lifetime, you watch the glory of God rise and fade back in your life. That people look at you and say, this man was once anointed, once great, once powerful, once influential. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Let me speak over someone here. Whatever will make that word, Ichabod, happen in your life. That they will say you once were great, once were anointed, once were prayerful, once were disciplined. I curse it right now. I curse it right now in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says the path of the just. Is that in your Bible? It says it's as a shining light that shineth more and more. More and more is the preordination for every believer. It is in our destiny to experience more and more. Hallelujah. Reminds me of the story of Eli and his sons. Consistent compromise brought them to a point where the Bible says they went to battle with the ark of God and now the ark had been captured and then his son Hophni and Phinehas, they were killed. And when they returned, they came and told the old Eli. They said, listen, three things have happened that are dangerous. Number one, the nation of Israel has been defeated in battle. Number two, your sons Hophni and Phinehas have all been killed. But number three, the ark of God, the symbol of your priesthood, has been taken away the bible says the moment they said that eli fell backward he hit his head and died and the wife the daughter-in-law when she had that she got into labor immediately and when she gave birth she named the child ichabod it says the glory has departed from israel they say you will leave she said no she gave birth and she also died everything that will make your life a warning to others that people will use your life to warn themselves, warn their children, warn other pastors. Here at this Gaining Momentum Conference, may it die from your life forever. Shout a louder amen. May it die forever. There are people who were prayerful until they became anointed. Now, whether you pray or not, because when you teach, things work. Ah, the deception of great people. 